and gentlemen, today we are going to have an episode of Semi-Correct Physics History. And today we are going to look at two physicists, one by the name of Orsted and the other by Faraday. Alright, let's start off with Orsted. His name was Hans Christian Orsted and he kind of looked like what you see on the screen. Okay, let's give you a um, perspective of the time frame. Uh, we are right around the 1800s. Uh, this is when the, there were steamboats invented, the stethoscope was invented, uh, the cupcake was invented, believe it or not. Um, and right here we have the lightning rod. So electricity is a, um, is a measurable and observable thing, and scientists are like fascinated. They, they think it's like super duper cool and they're messing with it and doing experiments. All right. So back in those times, um, they would have boats uh, that people would sail around and they would have compasses to navigate. And uh, they, they would notice that during lightning storms, <laughs> right, if, a, if a lightning struck super close or if, they, if it struck the boat, um, they, they, would, they would look at the compass and they would see that the compass would go all crazy. And so scientists took this idea and they were like, okay, so what, what can we say? Uh, and so scientists came up with this idea that running, attracts, uh, running electricity must affect magnets. Okay. And so, like all good scientists, uh, the scientists of the time, they decided to do experiments. So what they did is they, they got a wire uh, and they let electricity run through the wire. Uh, but they would also have a compass near the, the, uh, the wire to see if anything would change. Okay. And the compass would be lined up so that it, it would be pointing towards the wire. And that is actually very important. Um, and during the initial experiments, what do you think happened? And if your answer is nothing happened, you'd be correct. Um, and so, you know, it baffled scientists because scientists knew that there was something there, but they just couldn't figure out what. So along comes Hans Christian Orsted. Um, he was about to give a, a lecture to a, uh, a, a crowd, um, and he had his demonstration ready, the demonstration of where you get a wire and you get a compass uh, and you shoot electricity through it, right? He was going to explain to the crowd what, you know, what could happen. Right, and then uh, there's a knock on the door, and he's like, "Come in," um, and they're like, "Professor, we we need you. There's a there's a fight that you need to break up." And Hans Christian Orr said, "A uh, little known inaccurate historical fact was a uh, a bouncer for for the university. They call them universities in in Europe. So he goes out there to break up the fight. But before he leaves, he tells his his teaching assistant, "Hey, uh, make sure that my demonstration is good to go." Right. So he, he leaves out uh, the room. To, Take care of things, and in comes his his assistant, and his assistant's like, oh, okay, uh, uh, looks like I'm going to do this, but he wasn't necessarily the most capable of assistants, and he kind of fumbled around, and he tripped. Yes, believe it or not, he tripped, and he knocked the box of demonstration to demonstration off his kilter, and he's like, crap, and right, and then he kind of like put it back in his place, and he ran out of the room. Okay, and then he tell the professor, the professor goes running in because it's time for the the lecture, so the professor comes in. And he's lecturing, 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 and, in, and he goes through the idea that running electricity should, it should uh, create this compass to move, right? So this is how the setup, um, the experiment was, was set up. But because it was knocked out of place, the, the compass wasn't pointing towards the wire, right? So that's how it should have been set up. But instead, it was set up like this, so that the compass was not pointing to or towards where it should have been, all right? Um, and so... Orsted, he, he flipped on the switch and right, the current runs through. And lo and behold, the, the compass, it, it flipped, right? And which is, which is crazy. Like his draw just dropped to the floor and he's baffled. And like the crowd doesn't know, the crowd doesn't care. Like it just, this means nothing to them. Like this demonstration was like, all right, that's cool, I guess, right? But little known fact to them was they just witnessed the beginning of the scientific revolution of their time and age, okay? Because of this discovery, uh, like there's engines, iPhones, iPads, and hover cars, right? Well, soon. All right, and so uh, Orsted goes and publishes his paper and along comes Michael Faraday. Now, Michael Faraday, uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, Started at the bottom, and now we're at the top, kind of guys. Son of a blacksmith, um, but this this man, he loved he loved to read. He loved science, and he was he got fortunate enough to be invited to a lecture. And back in those days, you know, you didn't have TV, and so you would have live shows. Um, and during these live shows, he would take notes, uh, and then he just he just gobbled up all the science that he could take. Um, 
All right. And so Michael Faraday, you know, things happened that happened, and it led him to look at Orsted's experiments. Um, now, around that time, people thought that electric current was kind of like a fluid, like like water through a, a pipe. Like the electrons or the electricity was being pushed through this pipe, which, you know, is not necessarily the case. But, like, the crazy thing is, is, like, they could replicate that experiment, but they didn't understand why. Okay, so if, if we were to go back to the experiment, the, the crazy thing is, is that once there is running current, the magnetic deflection is always going to be 90 degrees or perpendicular to the direction of the current. Okay, and that and like that just boggled the scientists of the time because they thought that you know, for example, Newton's law says if if you push an object in one direction, the object accelerates in that direction, right? And clearly, there was something that was pulling or pushing the needle of the compass, but it was going in the in a direction that wasn't even part of the axis of the the flow of current, and, and it baffled people's minds, right? And so Michael Faraday comes along and he thinks about it, and he's like, I think I got it. What if this electrical current creates like this this field, right? This field, and um, this field is not moving with with the the current, but it's kind of like swirling around, almost like wind. And the compass like catches that wind, and that's why it deflects, kind of like a flag in the wind, right? The flag blows in the direction uh, that the wind is going. And the people at the time, they're like, Faraday, uh, you're kooky. You know nothing about science. That's wrong. Okay, that goes against whatever we know about physics, right? And but Faraday, he was such a great experimentalist. He was like, all right, you know, y'all can think about what you think is right. I'm just gonna go and do an experiment because I'm a scientist and that's what I do. And so he came up with this the very different experiments. He got a wire and he shot electricity through it. And what he noticed was that the compasses, no matter where the location. Okay, so he put compasses all around this, this wire with electricity running through it, and then he noticed that they would all deflect so that it creates a circular pattern of some sort. Okay, and so he came up with this idea that this, this electrical wind, okay, one might say, swirls around a wire. All right, and so um, he thought to himself, okay, if like, we, we know that electrical current can move a magnet, can a magnet move a electrical current like can the opposite also happen all right and so he thought you know if, if a equals b can b equal a and so he, he set up this experiment it's a really cool experiment like batteries were like they were this brand new thing so he set up a battery and he connected one end to a container and the other lead um it was allowed to swivel around that joint was allowed to swivel, and it was uh, suspended in, in mercury, and the magnet was in the mercury, okay? And so what, what happened was, when the experiment ran, he noticed that the swivel will swivel back and forth, 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 and this just blew his mind away, right? Because before, before the, the current was moving the magnet, but in this case, it, it looked as if the magnet was forcing the wire to move. Man. And so he wrote down these observations, uh, and there was a lot of drama that happened, but he, he got super famous, right? And, like, at that moment, I don't know if he knew it, but now you do know it, he just connected two ginormous pieces of the universe. And this is what we call the electromagnetic force, the E and the M combined into one and it kind of makes sense right if the e looks like this if you tilt it on the side 90 degrees it looks like an m i don't know if you ever made that connection right current going in one direction induces a magnetic field 90 degrees to it e and m right and boom faraday's life was changed okay the entire world was changed the scientists of the day their minds like it was changed like drop everything that you're doing we're exploring this it was that big all right, and so you know what? His his studies didn't stop there. He said, "Okay, I'm gonna try a new experiment." Okay, so uh, what he did, he got a iron ring and he wrapped he wrapped uh, tons of wire all around it, and he was like, "Okay, so if if I run a current through it along these curls of wire, I know it'll create a magnetic field, and if there's another set of curled wires near it, 
and those curls of wires experience a magnetic field, then it must, it must, it must experience a voltage of some sorts. And so he, he set up a galvanometer, which is a magnetic field detector, and he also set up uh, a little device to, to detect if there was current, okay? Um, and lo and behold, it, it deflected, right? His, his mind exploded at that point. So what he just found out was you can force a electric field in something else, or you could force a magnetic field in a, a wire as long as something that has it is close to it, right? And wow, once again, his mind was blown. This, this man is one of our greatest experimenters of our time and age. So it was like, I'm gonna call it Faraday's Law. Right, it's my law. I don't think he actually said that. I think later we called it Faraday's Law. Uh, but he had a friend, a younger guy, um, that, that did all the math. But Faraday's Law says, uh, when a magnetic field changes, it causes a voltage which it induces an electric field. So if you have a magnetic field and that, that magnetic field is moving, it causes an electric field. And vice versa, if you have an electric field that's moving, right, like a current, it causes a magnetic field, right? So that, that's Faraday's law. That's what we know as Faraday's law, and it has changed our world, all right? And so his friend, uh, Mr. Maxwell, okay, young, handsome-looking guy, he took that law, he was like, I'm, I'm good at math, and you're my homeboy, I will write the equation out for you, and he dedicated that equation to Maxwell, I mean to Faraday. So uh, even though we call them Maxwell's equation, uh, that one right there before your eyes is what we call Faraday's law, all right? And Faraday's law, B is the magnetic field. So if we have a magnetic field that's you know, changing, we have a E field that is produced, and vice versa. If we have an E field that is changing, we have a magnetic field that is produced. Right? And you might be thinking to yourself, really, what, what does that negative symbol mean? And that negative symbol uh, is for another time and day, which is another great uh, example in physics history. But yeah, you know, that's nice. Like That equation, so simple, so beautiful. Uh, but that's, that's physics history for you. That's semi-correct physics history. I hope you learned a thing or two. Goodbye.